near mint condition, the home of collected oh, edition. That cover is so awesome. Absolute format is the best way to own this store. Time to empty those wallets and fill those shelves. Hey guys, it's me, Wonder Maddie, and I am back with another haul video. <laughs> All right, so that was cheesy enough, but that's fine. It's been a while since my last haul video on here, but I have hauled some things this year that I'd love to show you. It's been a little bit of a slim year so far, as far as like my comic book purchases. I'm heavy in the video games. I'm heavy with the prose novels, books without pictures. They have those, that's crazy. Um, but I have gotten some stuff this uh, up to now and this year, and I want to share that with you. Let's go. Uh, so first of all, one of my things I have gotten and I keep pushing on everybody is Superman versus Meshi. This is volume one and two. I'm still missing volume three. Um, but this is something that I, I've had a lot of fun with. You can read it for, you can read on uh, DC Universe. You can find these pretty easily. I've seen them in like Target um, for pretty cheap. And this is basically just a manga series about how Superman is really into Japanese chain restaurants so it's just a bunch of goofs really like there's just him you know flying there on his brakes or taking his other friends from the justice league over there um what kind of sushi does aquaman eat does he eat sushi what happens when he takes batman over there and he loves the food so much that he wants to buy a whole franchise to bring over here to america uh it's a great time it's really silly like you can even tell just from like it's a little bit shiny here but it's okay um, Batman riding Superman's back to Japan. Japan. Like, it's, it, it's great. It, it messaged, you know, two of the things that I love a lot, which is, I love Superman, and I love manga, and I love Japan. So getting to see, like, him do regular people things there is really cool. Um, goofy. It's a goofy book, but I, I, I super recommend it. It's like a five out of five for me. Um, a few other things. So I also picked up Ghost Lore by Cullen Bunn. I haven't read it yet, but I picked it up sight unseen basically because of the Jenny Frisson cover and because it's Cullen Bunn. And I'll read any horror, any sort of thing he does. Just because like, especially in the past, we've done like Southern horror. I think he does it so well. So I'm very excited to check this out. And I've got some gifts. I've got a gift from a friend, uh, Jessica Ashcraft, friend of the channel. <laughs> Eat the Rich. Eric, so this is Boom Studios. It's another uh, mature book um, by Sarah Gailey and oh gosh, I can't pronounce the other ones. Anyways, <laughs> um, in this one, I haven't jumped into yet, but I know it's another psychological thriller. So I am excited to check this out soon. Um, very, I like the art a lot. It looks really like my kind of speed. Um, other ones, I've done a review of this with Peter, aka Crushing Crisis, on Old Reader, New Reader. Check me out on Tuesdays. One of my, this might, I don't know what my favorite read yet is of 2024. Obviously, we have a whole half of it left, but this is a big contender. This is Peacemaker Tries Hard by Kyle Starks. I love this book. I already, like, I liked the show well enough. I didn't like Peacemaker in the Suicide Squad movie, really, but... The show was funny, and Kyle just drove it home. This book, it's got some emotional points, but it's just got a lot of great, witty humor that only it only adds to all the characters and shows a great awareness of DC, its characters, and how they interact. Just so many goofy bits. I found myself reading through this and stopping, and then reading aloud the funny line I read to anyone who was around me. I was like, oh my god, this is really funny. You have to see this part. You have to see this part. And this is something that I've pushed on um, as many people as I possibly can. The art is fantastic. It's got that great, uh, just peacemaker fun. Uh, the peacemaker in here is definitely heavily inspired by John Cena. It has that look to him. And just a lot of the characters you run in here are great. And even just like the classic action onomatopoeia, like kapow and things like that are in here. And sometimes they'll take some creative liberties with that. It's great. And also there's a dog. There's a dog, you guys. His name is Bruce Wayne because he looks like he has a tiny tuxedo on. 10 out of 10. Very good. 
another book I got for old reader, new reader, after seeing Godzilla minus zero is Godzilla by James Stucco. We're assume that's how you pronounce it. Um, I had a great time with this. So after I watched Godzilla minus zero, I was obsessed. I was like, am I a Godzilla girly? Do I need to watch some more Godzilla movies? Do I need to read something? And I asked you all, hey, what do I read? And everyone said Godzilla by James Stucco. And this is a great just human story at its root because it follows, for the, for the majority of this, it follows one person. Um, and his, <laughs> Ota Murakami, and it follows him basically over 50 years, his life, but also his life in relation to him chasing Godzilla from Godzilla's, like, Godzilla's arrival to how Godzilla goes throughout the different countries, as well as the arrival of other um, famous Godzilla-related monsters. Really cool. I really like this. And also the art is spectacular. It's so unique, especially the colors. I think you've got to give it up for the colors in this book. You don't have to have any Godzilla knowledge. I think if I had watched more Godzilla, I would be more into it. Not into it. I would, I would appreciate some of the um, Easter eggs or new monsters that show up, but this is great for the art alone. Um, and I really would like to read more James Decoe, but I, I really fell in love with this book. And it's, look how cute it is. Look at that. Nice looking deluxe. We appreciate it. Oh, and this is IDW published. So one that I read came out just in time. Part of me delaying this haul video is so this would come out and I could talk about it. But uh, The Hunger and the Dusk. Uh, this is by G. Willow Wilson, Chris Wild Goose, and... This, this has to... I'm sorry. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, this, as a fantasy lover, this is so good. I have been seeing the floppies of this everywhere, but I, I, I didn't see like, issue one. So like, well, I'll just wait until the trade comes out. And it does not disappoint. It's also a little bit chunkier than you would think it would be. This is IEW. So the premise of The Hunger and the Dusk is basically like there's something happening to the world in this fantasy realm. Something is affecting their farmlands. So, and it's causing the orcs and the humans to battle more so than they already are doing because the orcs are losing the land for their livestock and the humans aren't able to farm. And so they are, they've been attacking one another. Um, but in the middle of this, some ancient race has shown itself up again. The really creepy <laughs> race um, that are hungry for flesh and they show up at dusk, hence the name. And so the humans and the orcs are having to band together and try to figure out what's happening. How are they attacking? How are they showing up out of nowhere? It has a lot of interpersonal relationships. So we have like our head of the, the orc group and our adventurers party. Uh, I won't say too much more because I'm going to do a video about this, but um, oh. I'm in love. You have to see at least some of the art. I love the character design in here. You know, it's been a while since I've seen a really good fantasy, capital F fantasy sort of um, comic book in a while. And so it's really refreshing for me as a huge fantasy fan to jump into something like this. And I love seeing orcs. I love seeing orcs shown in a different light. Very, very cool. Very happy with this. And I also got, I have an omnibus at the end. So I'm like, yeah, I got this. But let me show you my little like art and stuff. Cause I have been to a few cons this year, C2E2, and I've been to uh, MAGFest, Music and Gaming Fest up near DC. So these are just like related geeky things I've gotten. Uh, one of my favorites from One Piece, the from the Wano arc is this giant Frankie pop. I, I tend to only buy pops if they're like really niche or if they have a really cool design like this one. He stands on his own. He's got this great stupid hair. Read One Piece. It's really dumb. And then a lot of other Frankie things from Friends. Frankie's my favorite character from One Piece. And so whenever anyone goes abroad or go to Japan or whatever, they always bring me back little Frankie things. And at C2E2... I didn't get as much comic books, but I did get a lot of just random art and stuff. So in one booth, I got some of Batboy stickers. I think they're really cute. Got some Jason Todd and Damien. And the one, <laughs> uh, for anybody who's been watching a while, you know, I'm a huge Roy Harper fan. So I had to get this little silly print with Roy and <laughs> Red Hood. 
where Roy's like, I don't think we can mansplain, manipulate, or male wife our way out this time. And Jason's like, manslaughter it is. No, it's stupid. But again, there's never art of this man right here, my husband. So I had to get it. So I've been buying a lot of floppies as well. I didn't bring them all down here to show, but um, I am collecting in my pull list from my local comic book store, support your local comic book store, Green Arrow, uh, Wonder Woman, any sort of the Teen Titans stuff right now, especially World's Finest Teen Titans, as well as Tales of Teen Titans. As long as it has my original crew with like, you know, with Donna, that's that's where I'm at. But I've also been collecting just by sight because I liked the style of it. Um, I Heart Skull Crusher. So this is a new release from Boombox. And... <laughs> I picked it up, I think Melly did as well, just because of the anime style from this. And I had to pick it up. And it feels, it feels very anime manga inspired. It's very fun. It's very high action. Basically, <laughs> we're in sort of a post-apocalyptic world. And this girl in particular is trying to improve upon her station and get water. She wants access to water um, by entering in the sport. <laughs> Where basically you kill each other. Um, and she's trying to get this team together. Um, with many people not exactly willing and just kind of forced into it. Because she's a huge fan. So I'm only three issues in. I'm having a great time with it. The tropes in here are fun. Like, you know, the, the guy who was a big player back in the day but it's not doing it anymore. The twins that are just in it to kill people and get money. And <laughs> the... The coach that was really good in it, but he's not doing it anymore for some reason. And of course, your spunky main character who's like, I'm going to be the best one and I'm going to win and you're going to see even though I'm not that good yet. It's a great time. Oops. And I also got some prints. So at MAGFest, I, I'm a, I, I, tend to, I tend to buy a lot of art prints especially and I'm trying to buy more things that would work well for like a sort of gallery wall, like very nice. Got some stuff from Final Fantasy VII. And of course, some One Piece, Piece Princesses from the Wano arc, Onigashima, as well as one of the ship. We're looking for some elevated nerdy art in my house, you know? I feel bad for Omar, because he doesn't have a wall space for art, really. Sorry, you can cut there and then come back in when I... <laughs> Bring the prints out. And then I also got some Ghibli prints because I am theming my bathroom to be all Ghibli themed. So we got some soot sprites. We've got Totoro. And of course, we have the little forest sprites with some tulips. Again, elevated artwork. <laughs> And because we've been collecting the rest of this, I had to stop by Sunny Disposition's booth at C2E2 as well um, for the her art of like the third season of Critical Role, which again, the comics are great, cartoons are great, check them out. But she's made one of these for each of the crews for each season because when they defeat a monster, the DM, Ma Matthew Mercer always says, how do you want to do this? They so can describe it. And last but not least, thank you, Omar. This beautiful... Fantastic Four out of us. I'm a man. I'm a man, Wade. Who was, um, I've interviewed before. Very nice guy. Super excited to read this. I've only ever read one, like, one or two other Fantastic Four runs. I've read Hickman's, and I believe I've read one other. So I'm excited to dig into this, especially because I'll read anything by Mark Wade. He's my guy. I trust him. I feel like he's one of the people that I always know really gets characterization very well. He's very good at dynamic character storytelling and character building. And it comes from a love of those characters. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more.
so yeah, that's <laughs> that's my haul. It's a little bit smaller than before. Um, I'm hoping maybe I'll get more into catching up on my comic book buying the rest of the year. I've been checking out my library a lot. Check out your library. You know, sometimes it's easy to watch shows you're like, oh man, I got my FOMO, right? That's okay. Check out your library. Uh, and I'd love some recommendations. I'm a little behind on what's coming out this year. So if anyone has any recommendations of things you'd like or think I would like, uh, let me know in the comments down below. I hope you like this video and subscribe to future videos. You can catch me on Tuesdays on the show Old Reader, New Reader, where I have a guest on and we read a book. One of us is the old reader. One of us is a new reader. Every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern live. And yeah, uh, check out our Patreon for more exclusives. And I hope I see you around, Minties. Bye.